In the metro Kansas City area, there are over 3,000 homeless or displaced teens on a given night trying to survive in a city with a crime rate more than three times the national average. With the few remaining shelters at full capacity and long waiting lists, these teens are left to couch surf. This is the journey of a young man who overcame these challenges and an organization committed to making a difference in the lives of teens. This is where it all really began. Used to live right over there, the greenhouse across the street. This is my grandma's house. Stayed here too, really. When Marvin was three years old, his father died of a sudden heart attack while driving down the road. I have sort of like a picture that, I mean, my dad wasn't around, but I really didn't understand, I mean, that he died. Me and my mom, we went to a funeral in Arkansas it was an open casket funeral, of course, and when it was me and my mom's turn to, to go up and, and pay respects to my father, uh, I tried to hop in the casket with him and lay with him. And a lot of my family members began to cry because I really didn't know that he was dead. I was asking him to wake up. But, I mean, that's when I really learned and understood that my father was dead. After Marvin's father passed away, his mother entered into a series of abusive relationships while Marvin became a big brother to two younger siblings. As a, at the time, she was married to a pretty well-known drug dealer. But, I mean, that, that lasted only so long. I mean, we got, our house was kicked in. I mean, it was hard, hard seeing it. I mean, being young, police asking you questions. I mean, as the as time went on, they, he was really a terrible, terrible man. I mean, I grew up watching him beat her. At one point, I think I remember somebody telling me that I told them that they were wrestling or whatever, because I, I was so young, so I really didn't understand it. Me and my brothers were in our room chilling, and then we heard like, kind of like noise and ruckus. And then uh, we came out and we watched my mom get beat by her boyfriend which was tough, like I, I didn't like it. Like I would, me and like I would cry and then, I mean, me and my brothers would kind of like hypothesize a plan to be like to, to kind of protect her, but we never really were able to go through with it at, a, at our young age. I wanted, we wanted to do something about it, but my mom begged us not to. It's, it's rough man, it's tough seeing, seeing your mom get treated like, like a dog and you can't do anything about it. I mean, both of these guys really were, weren't smart decisions. I mean, they got my mom into, into a past that she really never even thought of. Like, before them, she was doing just fine, like finishing up school, well-paying job, money, never really needed anything from anybody. But, I mean, they came in, came in her life and changed that. As Marvin started attending school, his family struggled to maintain a consistent residence moving back and forth between homeless shelters and domestic violence homes. This is like first school, first school I really started going to. Uh, I went here first through sixth grade. Things were really not stable. I mean, they really helped us, they helped us a lot. I mean, we like going to school here, I didn't even, I mean, we were, we were deemed homeless. I mean, we stayed like right around the corner at this uh, shelter called Restart. It wasn't, wasn't a nice place to live in, I'll tell you that. Uh, in fact, they were really infested with rats, roaches. We lived in a, we lived in like, kind of like in a, it was like a one bedroom apartment thing. Had a stove, one bath. But I mean, it's what I call home. Stayed here for about, I say, 
a semester of school, semester of uh, second grade. Like, I just asked myself, like, why are we here? But, I mean, I understand times, times are hard. And as my mom being a single parent, I mean, it, I mean, I just really, at, at the end of it, I was thankful for having a roof over my head because every day we would see somebody being kicked out of the place because they weren't following the rules or their time was up. So, I mean, I was thankful that we had a place to stay. Not even the neighborhood parks that typically serve as a safe, enjoyable place for children were immune from the harsh realities of inner city life. Me and my little brothers used to come to this park and play a little bit. This is, they call this Jurassic Park. I mean, I don't know why, but that's what they call it. I mean, there's a lot of, like from people not being able to get in the, the shelter, a lot of people come out here and just sleep. Marvin's mother consistently encouraged her three sons to rise above the street culture of gangs, drugs, and guns that sucked in so many of their peers. Being from the 50s, see, the 50s and the 30s were rival gangs. They still are. So, like, it's pretty dangerous. Like, if you know from being from the 50s and you walking through here, you can get you can get killed. Just from, just from where you live. You used to, if you were in the 30s, you didn't pass 47th Street. If you came past 47th Street in the 50s, you were gonna get shot. <laughs> if you were recognized or noticed. Yeah. A lot of my friends, a lot of my friends is gone. Trying to be grown, man. Trying to grow up too fast. Nowadays, people just don't care, like, guns. Like, every, like a lot of my friends I know that stay here down in the city got guns, just to have it. Kids, like, in elementary school smoking, messing with guns, like, because they see high schoolers doing it, and they see they, people that they look up to doing it, and it's, it's seen as, it looks good to them, like, it looks like a lifestyle that, that they want to live. Cause it's fast, easy money, but it's really dumb. Like a lot of my friends have really been caught up, been set up really. Even when Marvin and his family found a home away from the shelters, he was still exposed to violence in the inner city. But even though this was a nice neighborhood, I mean, I watched my neighbors get robbed at gunpoint for their car. I mean, I was sitting right on the porch, me and my brother, and I mean, it all happened right here. I mean, it was it was a scary sight. I mean, as, after, as soon as the people left, we ran right in the house. I mean, I didn't want anything to do with it. As a sophomore at Imagine Renaissance Academy, Marvin began to show promise on the basketball court. He was introduced to Buzz Carruthers, an assistant basketball coach at the Barstow School. Little did Marvin know that this relationship would be the first of many that led to a life-altering opportunity. Most kids that come from his background have an attitude. Um, and he wasn't like that. He was different in a, in a way that um, he had a good attitude, uh, a great personality, and uh, he, was just, he was just fun and, and, and loving. It's just, he was just different. He was different from a lot of kids that come from his background. Buzz's brother-in-law, Matt Suther, founded the MOCAN organization that had a history of helping kids in similar situations. I was two years removed from playing uh, Division I college basketball at UMKC um, and, and was fully entrenched in the corporate world and, and, and saw a lot of kids that were coming out of Kansas City that were not making it at the next level. Um, and so I wanted to get back involved with something that um, had consumed so much of my life um, and, and try to teach these kids the things I thought they needed to be successful from a basketball standpoint when they went to that next level. And, and I was so surprised uh, when I started working with the first group that you know, basketball was such a small piece of, of what they needed and, and why a lot of them weren't succeeding at the next level. As Buzzy began to spend more time with Marvin, um, we realized that, that Marvin was, was very similar to a lot of kids that we had recently had come through the program that, that you know, had the desire and had the passion um, for basketball. When I met Marvin and, and he came along in my life, it was just, I just saw this kid that had all this potential and you know, I felt like I could really help him achieve that. And so I just kind of, 
you know, took them under my wing, and and that was really the first time I'd ever had a sense of, of, of having that that little brother. Buzz coming into his life was very good for him, at, especially at that time because he was going through his teenage, you know, his teenage years. So he's already struggling, you know, with dealing with that, but yet he's trying to be strong for his younger brothers and sisters. So he was a very good role model and mentor in his life, I feel, and got him out whenever Marvin may have needed that that time, you know, that, that positive man in his life rather than he never really had because his father passed. And, and I think Buzz is like a big brother to him, too, you know, because he just, he's there for him when he needs anything, and he can come to him for anything, I feel. When we identified that Marvin was a young man that we wanted to try to help find a different environment, I reached out to um, you know a lot of people that, that we had created relationships over the year, relationships with over the years, and um, you know, a counselor in the Blue Springs School District stepped up and, and felt like she could help, so she was able to find him a great home in Blue Springs, which is a which was a great start um, for Marvin in terms of getting some some normalcy in his life and, and allowing him to focus on the things that he needed to focus on. The move to Blue Springs marked the first time he spent an entire year at the same school. Before this, Marvin changed schools more than nine times. This stability began to pay dividends on the basketball court as Marvin began to be recognized for his athletic ability. At Blue Springs, I began to slack off a little bit in uh, certain classes. And right away, Matt and Buzz got on me. But they've also, like, like, kind of been like my father figures, you know, like helping me, like keep, keep in line. Uh, they've also helped me just, I mean, I saw the basketball just being able to like have a roof under my head. I mean, and I really didn't even know them at the time. Like that's how you know like that, that they're, like the organization is really family, about family and about helping people. Cause I mean, I didn't know them, like probably knew them for like a couple of months and they like had somebody put a roof under my head, which I'm gravely, I'm gravely thankful for that. During the summer of 2012, Marvin developed a special chemistry with some of his Mocan teammates who had come from similar backgrounds. Three of his teammates attended Sunrise Christian Academy, a small private school located outside of Wichita, Kansas. The transition to Sunrise took place um, not because we weren't happy with the progress he was making at Blue Springs, but because uh, we saw that you know, Marvin Maybe he needed a little more of an intimate environment where he could get more one-on-one um, -on -one interaction with teachers and, and, and you know, be in a, in a place that didn't have as many social, um, you know, distractions. Leaving my family was like a very hard and delicate situation to deal with because, I mean, they're all I have and I'm all they have and, I mean, they don't really live in the, the greatest part of, in the city. So, I mean, I was just really worried about what if I lose somebody, how would that outcome have on me? But after I talked to my mom and, I mean, she really just said that I really not, like, don't need to be selfish, but I need to think about myself more than as, as a, the whole family, really. So her being okay with it really helped me make a decision to come out here. It was hard seeing him go to, you know, get this opportunity to go to school, but it was a blessing at the same time because I know he can make it and I know he can be something, I know he can do it and I, the situation and the time that I was going through, I don't think if, um, he might not have made it if, if he just stayed home or, you know, but I, I had to tell him, you know, you got to go, you know, go do this. Well, y'all, y'all may, need, I know y'all need me, mom, I know you need, but that doesn't matter, you know, and what you're going to gain and get from this is going to be positive to all of us. You know, the thing that struck me about Marvin was kind of knowing his background and, you know, just a little bit hearing of what he had been through. I, I didn't really know the full story. Um, knowing what he had been through, you know, I, I, he was a very mild-mannered kid um, and almost laid back. And, and I, I almost class it as unsure of himself. Um, you know, maybe, maybe a kid that, you know, um, didn't quite know how, how good he was or how good he could be. Maybe didn't have hope, you know, that he could he could really do it, really make it. Was he good enough? Was he not? He's he's made a very good adjustment to it, you know. Um, he he really has bought into the culture, and I think he you know he wants to see himself 
um, live a better life. And uh, you know, he's he's grabbed onto it, and it's it's been refreshing. But I know there's been all kinds of differences for him as far as what's acceptable and what's not, and um, you know, just just how hard we work in the classroom. His skills in the class are probably at the top of anybody else in there. He does really well. Um, some of the students that I have transferred in try hard but struggle, and that's not been the case with him. He's, he knows what he's doing, and um, a lot of fun having him in class. He comes in, works hard, and he's a good kid. Teachers really don't even care about basketball, or, or really, they really just care about your grades, like especially the principal, Miss Campbell. Like, she should tell you straight to your face, like, I don't care about ball. Like, you gotta make sure these grades are right. So, I mean, and just from moving out there, my grades, like, like have improved. Like, I finished this, uh, this quarter with, like, a 3.0. Along with an excellent academic reputation, Sunrise boasts one of the best high school basketball programs in the nation. First few days he was here, obviously, you know, I was watching him very close because I, I just, I didn't, really know what we had. I didn't know how he was going to take it all. And I mean, if, if you would see our guys in the weight room, most people's eyes just pop out of their head because first of all, we worked so hard and, um, you know, it's something that they're not, they're not really used to. And, 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 uh, they chant pretty much the whole time they're in there doing their war cries and, you know, they have all these little chants that they do to just kind of fire each other up. I mean, they, they pretty much get after it the whole time and it's intense. In the first few days, you know, Marvin was in there, and um, he was not—he was not uh, talking back to anybody. He was just barely surviving, you know. And I just thought, oh man, he may not make it. And um, I just think the guys steadily brought him through that. I mean, they—they they encouraged him, and you know, they encouraged him to fight through that pain of those first couple of weeks, you know. Little by little, I think as he saw his body begin to change, you know, he just kind of survived it at first, and then. Then, you know, you saw Marvin, like, in the weight room, you know, he was leading the chance. And now he's the one, you know, hooting and hollering and having a good time in there, not just surviving the workout. And, and I think that that's, um, you've seen a direct ref reflection of, you know, the toughness that he's gained from accomplishing those things in the weight room. He's taken those to the basketball court. And I, I think you see the same thing um, off the court. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's developing character where, you know, he doesn't run from hard things, doesn't run from hard choices. You know, he knows what it is to be a man now. He knows that there is benefits from going through things that are tough and hard and difficult. The move to Sunrise has been a success on and off the court. Marvin continues to be on pace to graduate and has been an instrumental part of their basketball success. With their national schedule and a 22-0 start, this year's team is currently recognized as the eighth best high school basketball team in the country. Along with the team success, colleges from across the country like the University of Oregon, Texas A&M, Oklahoma, Iowa, and Wichita State are recruiting Marvin. If the things that we're teaching the young men within our program, they take and teach their kids and their kids' kids, then we've succeeded. The program is more than just about basketball, like it's about life, like trying to not necessarily just make us good basketball players, but make us good people in general. Like you got to hold yourself accountable. Like only like if if you don't believe in yourself, then who will? After all that he's been through, to be the man that he is today is just awesome to me because I sit and look at you know his, his brothers and sisters and the things that the life that we have lived and been through, and for him to just the goals that he's accomplishing are speaking more to his brothers and sisters and to me than um, really him being here because it's it's showing them that they can do it too, you know, that they can do it. All I know is that there's there's a lot of kids out there that, that um, wouldn't have another way if it weren't for um, people like that, you know, that care and give these guys an opportunity. You know, I, I would hate to think of my own child, my own son, um, being being in a situation like that where all he needed was somebody that you know took some time took some care took a little effort and and tried to make his life better i think that'll definitely impact i mean i'm i'm around nothing but really good and caring husbands as far as helping me become a man and learning how to handle how to handle business with the family uh, i think 
I'm really that's that's really a learning experience too, just being around so many loving people and seeing people have a strong household. I think that's that's a good foundation for me, will help me for my future. I am Marvin Clark. I am Marvin Clark. I need encouragement. I need mentoring. I need love. We are Marvin Clark. I am Marvin Clark.